Thank you. Uh, some high expectations being set. I, I hope we try to come closer to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so first off, um, I want to just thank Sudanshu. I think the points which Sudanshu articulated today morning were, were so apt out there. And um, personally for me, like I'm a big believer of partnerships. And I think that's something which uh, is a huge segue to our topic as well. Okay, because we are talking about innovation and we are talking about how innovation can impact digital marketing. Uh, you know, when I heard the, heard the topic given to us uh, of innovation and impact on digital marketing, and I immediately looked at the amount of time we had. You know, so we had like 30, 40 minutes, and I felt like, look, this is a conversation which can be a day-long conversation, and believe you me, it will still not have, we will still not have enough of it. You know, uh, so in the next 30, 40 minutes, we'll try to touch upon some interesting facets around innovation. Uh, and how it impacts marketing. Before you know, I start the conversation, I just want to add a couple of points so that I can contextualize the conversation per se. So today, if we look at that word innovation and we try to decode that word, I personally think that we all are in a superstore of digital innovations. You know, so you talk about AR, you talk about chatbots, you talk about influencer marketing, you talk about content, platforms, talk about marketing automation, you talk about data warehouse, you know, you talk about DMPs, you talk about so many and the list can go on and on and on, right? Uh, so that's really, you know, we are surrounded with all of that. And obviously when we are looking at all of this, I think as the panel members out here, as with the kind of vast experience they have, you know, mm. we're talking about people cumulatively having about 50, 60 years of experience they've dealt over the years with change and applied that change, learned from that change in the ecosystem, whether it's the consumer change, whether it's the technology change, whether, whether it's the way the media is evolved, and then applied that to marketing. You know? uh, so we've seen all of that coming to play. Uh, what is making interesting, you know, when, when we try to look at the present and we say that, listen, what's the most interesting thing now for us? You know? So innovation is not just helping brands or existing brands market to consumers in a much better way, but now we are also at a point that because of digital innovation, there is a rise of new brands. Okay? So we are now seeing a virtuous cycle, okay, which is like saying innovation is not just helping existing brands, but it is helping people get ideas and people are coming up with new brands. So it's a full cycle right now, guys. You know, so this just makes it so um, interesting for all of us um, to be in that ecosystem and try to get our minds wrapped around it and use that opportunity, you know, to our advantage from whatever roles we play at this current point of time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, to just start my first question, what I'll do here is I'll make another comment out here and I say that, look, you know, when we look at innovations and when we look at marketing per se. Many of the panel members out here would very have closely seen with their own experiences, successes, failures, learning curves, as you know, I borrowed this word from Ranjini yesterday evening and she used this word which is called medium success, you know, which I feel is such an appropriate status for many of us, you know, because innovation is not about big success, innovation starts with some to medium success, you know. Uh, so, so let me just stop my monologue now. Yeah, <laughs> and and so what comes top of mind, you know, uh, Ranjini, to you when you think of marketing and innovation? Hi, good morning, everybody. So four things come top of mind. Sorry, you're going to be subjected to another monologue, but as marketeers, I think uh, chatting and talking comes natural to us. Um, I think the first thing is just borrowing from a great saying, with great, um, uh, with great powers come great responsibility. So if you look at what digital innovation has done for us, it's given practitioners, practitioners like me, um, great powers to go down the brand funnel, starting from awareness, going all the way to commerce. And how does every innovation play itself out very significantly across the span of the, of the funnel? And, and coming from the jewelry business, I head up marketing for Tanishk. For us, it's helped us 
Let me give you an example in two ways. One, uh, we speak to many cohorts of consumers, and in the past, the spray and pay mechanism has been quite limiting. But today, you can find uh, cohorts, customer audiences, lookalikes, um, feed uh, communication to them, depending on what is your job to be done. So I think the first learning has been, don't be overwhelmed by what you see digital offer to you. Look at what is the job to be done and apply the filter of which lever are you trying to influence between awareness to consideration to preference to commerce. Uh, I think the second learning has been that we've always been fed thanks to our education system like nothing succeeds like success. And that brings me back to the conversation we had yesterday about medium success. But I think now the whole mantra is nothing succeeds like experimentation. So if I look at the virtual try-on that you see on our Tanish website today and where we started, we've come a long way. Had we looked at our first proto and said that's a failure, we wouldn't have moved forward at all. Or the chatbot, which was like a machine, and slowly we gave her an avatar, we gave her a feminine persona, we added intelligence to the how the chatbot responds. Our first attempt was pretty uh, rookie and paltry. So that's our second learning, which is like keep experimenting. The third is uh, another uh, debunking theory that um, man is a creature of habit. I think that's changing. Our consumers are adopting new habits faster than we are, so I think momentum is critical and is key. Fourth, I think something you spoke of, Sudhanshu spoke of, no man is an island. Today, the ecosystem that my team manages uh, is vast. The amount of partners we've brought on board. We used to have a digital agency, a media agency. Today, my agency list, I mean, it's not as impressive as the way you had it at Woot, but it's a large, and everyone is a specialist who comes to the table with a certain expertise. And we have to build teams, and we have a lot of young members in our team who learn to work cohesively with these diverse set of partners, but still hold the brand together. I think my, that's sort of four things that I just wanted to kick off this conversation with. I'll, I'll come back to some points uh, later. Uh, Santosh, um, you want to pick up any cue and talk about, you know, probably innovation. And I, I think if you could call out any failures in the process of experimenting with innovation. Yeah, thanks, Deepak. Uh, I think a lot of relevant points made by Ranjini also on this topic and maybe a few examples. Uh, and as you said, failures, uh, we are all just out of COVID. In fact, one of the first conferences of Exchange for Media I'm attending physically, otherwise it's mostly on the screens. Uh, and here, uh, you know, I go back a year or two years back when COVID stuck and a lot of people said now no, no showrooms, people will buy cars. Uh, it, it, that's what started triggering this entire digital buying process. And then we had a lot of collaborators. They pitched AR solutions, VR solutions to us saying that, you know, this is the way future of buying cars and uh, nobody would come to the showroom. They would not interact with a sales guy. So why don't you go online? And, you know, this is a very natural uh, process. And we said, firstly, will people buy luxury cars online? Because we are not a mass market manufacturer. And second is uh, whether this experience would work. But having said that, if you don't try, you will never know. So within around 15 days, unlike a typical German organization, we were able to get all the requisite uh, approvals. We got certain partners on board and we went live within 30 days. And there we had our set of learnings. Um, so one of the biggest learning, actually it was something that we could have easily figured out in retrospect, is virtual consultations doesn't work because, you know, there we realized that a, that many of the customers used to dial online but never used to keep the cameras on. And then later on we felt, why? Because it's a two-way communication, it should be quite simple. So we did a simple dipstick research, we called up some guy saying, why didn't you switch it on? They said, hey, I was in my pajamas at my home and I don't want you to see me. I'm buying a luxury car today, so I don't want, uh, so I'm fine to see your car but not me as such. So we had to shift, we had to shift to non-intrusive ways. Uh, of course, chatbot uh, were there, but it's too mechanic. Uh, you know, it's again not human interface, and therefore uh, we now have chats uh, with human interface 24 by 7. And from there till now, uh, today, uh, you know, I'm proud to say we do 15 to 20 percent of our car sales online, which is more than 1500 crores of business. Uh, buying a luxury car, buying a Mercedes Benz online was never thought of. We are the best market in the world today when it comes to buying cars online. Uh, we last month sold 100 cars via chat consultations. I am saying Jan to uh, May period. Uh, even, of course, you can say 100 cars over 5 month period may not be great, but still, chat 
the 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 guy has not the person has not met the customer so that's an example we 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 learned quickly we changed the processes uh, we came up with a fantastic marketplace format and we innovated uh, the other example i would like to give is again it doesn't need to be just a marketing innovation you know again uh, going back to the covid example uh, we had a huge issue in finding covid testing centers and we said can there be a product innovation which can help customers. So Google itself has not powered their maps at that point of time. We quickly spoke to Map My India. We, we had hardly a couple of centers across. Uh, they were able to juxtapose it and in our head unit of the car, because all our cars are connected, we were able to give a solution where you would sit into the car and say, navigate me to the nearest COVID center. So it worked frankly for 25 days because by that time Google had everything there and much better frankly than us. But in that 25 days, I think the customer feedback was, at least you guys thought about it. And that's something which also goes beyond uh, marketing or trying to sell something. Can you be relevant at the point mm -hmm. where the customer wants some, uh, some stuff and how fast can we turn it around? So these are examples of innovation doesn't generally mean to sell a product or to just build a brand. Can, what kind of value you can add to the customer also helps. So maybe helps the audience to understand. I think, um, you know, when he's echoing that part and the word which just uh, stays with me is that micro innovations or incremental innovations, you know, so whenever you're looking at incrementality you, or innovations are not really about going 20 steps ahead in, you know, incremental innovation, I think are very smart hacks to empower the business. Uh, okay, so... Just on the point you made, which is very interesting, and we experienced that the same ju with jewelry buying. We never thought people would buy jewelry through a video call. And we have a substantial amount of business that happens um, through video calls today, even post um, the um, normalcy coming back. And it's a point that Sudhanshu also made. When you have a strong brand and you're a trusted brand, your innovations take off from what you've already built over time. And that makes um, success or experimentation even three. more um, easy for you. So you must trust in your brand and uh, believe that consumers are quite forgiving even if you have something which is uh, a work in progress. Yeah, I remember you having this point or this comment which you made yesterday was about you know, the whole purchase journey, you know, where the person is in the store, um, they are patching their family, okay? So they are able to show the designs to them. They're able to quickly get a buy-in of which jewelry design works for them and they are able to then take a decision Absolutely. you know so this is a classic example we are saying that and yeah so <laughs> so that's a, a, a very interesting point out there so uh, shifting the conversation um, pragya you're hearing two two of our panel members you know bringing up some diverse points i'm sure something is ticking in your mind uh, so i'll just pass the mic to you Thanks. Uh, it's very interesting to hear cross-industry experience. And I was just talking some time back. Uh, digital is, of course, exciting, and we see innovation almost every day. I think what puts back an ownership on us is to make very wise choices. You know, marketers often, when it comes to especially digital, have this uh, fear of FOMO. You know, I don't want to miss out this platform. I want to participate here. I want to be seen everywhere. You know, what works for you is very important for you to judge. Now, giving an example of, you know, my own brand, Crompton, we are actually into fans, uh, where we currently the market leaders. We are into other categories as well. We are into appliances. We are growing very fast there. We are into lights. We are into residential pumps. And we've got into uh, an inbuilt appliance category, which is very different from what we've operated in the past. You know, an inbuilt hob, chimney, and so on and so forth. Now, what came as a task to us was, you know, what works for fans definitely does not work for inbuilt, let's say. You know, fans is more than a 95% plus penetration category, and so is lights. And we're very salient there. So, you know, what is the choice of medium which we need to adopt for fans probably will not work for inbuilt. And therefore, for as a marketer, it's our responsibility to choose what works, what doesn't work. And also within what works, not to get overly excited. Now, Let's say fans does really well. We are, you know, growing in a market share. We're doing extremely well. Uh, sometimes you get too tempted to make certain choices. I'll just give you an example, which was a partial success, as you guys call it. Uh, and you know, I'll just give an example of a similar tool which was used somewhere else. 
so we started uh, working uh, on a new fan which we launched which basically stood for silence and we said that okay fine silence is what everything everyone talks about why don't you pu we put it a little more forcefully at the point where it matters so we started doing location based targeting through one of the platforms and we said okay we'll aim at inviting higher footfalls to our nearest outlet yes we did get incremental footfalls the idea was also to lead you know the, the way the objective was defined increase awareness for the new product increase consideration and invite footfalls now three tasks on hand for a same product becomes a little difficult yes it did lead to higher engagement but it did not lead to incremental footfalls as we expected and uh, the basic thought or fundamental of what the brand stands for or what the category stands for is that the replacement cycle is just 5 years you cannot insist on a consumer making a footfall into a shop by seeing a visual ad you know of course you can lead to a higher top of mind you can lead to a higher consideration and therefore to for you to define your campaign success measures on digital becomes very important depending on which stage of the consumer journey you're in you know and what is your replacement cycle what is your category like now the same example if you taken for something like a mcdonalds could work a little better when you do location based targeting you've got you know creatives which talk about certain offers you immediately tempt as a consumer to go to the nearest outlet and then you know uh, seek that benefit or gratification which you get from a particular advertisement uh, you know within that vicinity it doesn't work in certain categories it does work in certain categories and define your measurement index really well so there has been of course certain learnings there has been great successes one of the brands where i worked earlier uh, which was uh, one of the oil companies where we were targeting at uh, mini mini vans you know the smaller mini trucks uh, there we said our idea of location based targeting is higher engagement and awareness with the consumer so uh, the the overall uh, business size or the segment size being relatively smaller we wanted to ensure that there are no spillages uh, you know in our communication so we started doing location based targeting on uh, uh, on uh, targeting certain uh, you know van stands Uh, the engagement was really great the awareness levels went really high uh, and we saw great success with the campaign now the same campaign applied to fans same campaign applied to other categories with different objective led to different results so it's very important that marketers as they you know adopt digital make very conscious choices and rather i would say be cautiously optimistic about what they want to do instead of doing everything so that's that's the task which i see is really important because we will have abundance of choices which is great because we will have to use different tools for different spaces with different objectives but what we need to do is what we we need to be really clear about that cautiously optimistic <laughs> of the time yeah <laughs> so vishal you know you know we have, that's a perfect segue you could be a devil's advocate out here and you could say that listen you know these are things which we have to be very mindful when you deal with innovation i'm in fact going to get into that only uh see as as for me in innovations uh, in digital it's a huge huge trap it's a huge trap for marketers this and like you started the panel there there's ar vr metaverse matlab name it and you have something over there it's a huge huge temptation for marketers to keep on experimenting with yeah, we have mentioned the word fomo yes now we we need to be very careful about uh, what marketing is it's a, it's a very very basic uh, okay <laughs> it's not that basic but it's a very complex thing but but we don't need to make it more complex we need to be very sure about what our objective is i nowadays i i see brands talking about uh, uh, they've gone into metaverse and what have they done they've taken interview on metaverse so what 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 did it solve uh, what what were you trying to uh, gain from that so uh, i think uh, innovation in digital would be very basic i'll give you an example uh, uh, i was working on one of the sports brands i won't name the uh, sports brand and typically from a media point of view we were uh, uh, going across to all platforms where there was any sports content there was live sport uh, whatever but the needle wasn't moving uh, and we realized a very simple thing which we should have done before uh, uh, we even went to that campaign that most of the people who are watching 
that uh, piece of content on sports are not playing as in they they're sports fans but they themselves are not sports person and and that's the uh, uh, place where we went to a live panel we recruited people uh, people who were playing active sports at least for two hours in a week we studied their uh, digital behavior did a basic look alike modeling and then reached out to those uh, people and those people were not necessarily on sports platforms and the needle moved and it's a very basic very basic innovation which digital kind of gives me so i i think these kind of innovations are more important rather than going by what is uh, going to come tomorrow or day after tomorrow what is uh, going to be the uh, future i think uh, right now we should we should do what is more relevant for the objective today another uh, example i'll say uh, is that uh, let's not lift and shift there there is a solution that probably works uh, somewhere in some other geography or some for other for some other category but probably not for your geography not for your consumer and not for your category geo fencing is uh, one of uh, like for example it works brilliantly for uh, burger king and mcdonald's in us but you try doing the same thing over here we did that for a brand try to uh, try to move consumers uh, to a format store with a special offer nothing happened and 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 then the, we needed to do the basic thing went back to what the consumer wanted what the consumer behavior is did few t uh, tweaking and it worked so digital gives us a lot of uh, choices now there is a lot of innovation we can do but we shouldn't get into a trap check yeah. uh I think it's a very good point and I firmly believe that innovation is not something that you are on a new platform because uh, currently a lot of marketeers, agencies and you know teams, our own teams, they like to be on new things what's there. That's not innovation. I think innovation is coming from the consumer inside to say what problem can we solve and will the industry follow you and that, are you able to do something as a benchmark for others and they follow uh, even not for others but for first for your own brand and then maybe the others follow you so the trap is uh, there are so many buzzwords as deepak rightly started with uh, ar vr metaverse so on and so forth uh, and new trends it's all available in the public domain now taking that as a platform or taking that as a tool will it qualify innovation it sounds cool to do it uh, good for the management good to go back to the client or to the uh, or to your bosses and say you know we have tried this but maybe it is just, uh, you know, you're trying it, it, that's also great because only if you try and if you fail, you will learn. But I think we need to start from consumer insights and really classify innovation as something that will solve some consumer issue or a marketing problem that we have in front of us. So that's, uh, this uh, discussion is more about innovation, so we don't want to take away uh, the spirit of innovation because you have heard stories which didn't work very well or partially worked. But at the same time, uh, don't fear to innovate also. So, yeah, Deepak, over to you. Yeah, I think what we are hearing is useful and sustainable innovation. And, and as we do that, I think the focus shifts not on the innovation. I would probably say the focus shifts on us. We as people who are surrounded with innovation or we as teams who are surrounded with innovation and with partners, which are in turn our, our close ecosystem, our bespoke partners, um, uh, and when I say partners, I'm also talking about our own colleagues, you know, uh, understanding that how can they tackle that innovation? Do they have the right mindset to do it? Um, anything which is new uh, uh, requires discovery. Do we as a team come together collaboratively to solve that problem? Or is that, a, is that innovation just being delegated? You know, so because you're also, because finally you are, innovation is equal to risk and risk needs to be managed you know so I'll, I'll just you know with that point uh, i know there are some thoughts on ecosystem on team on organizations around innovation anjani you would like to probably start see i go back to uh, and i think some of this uh, vishal and santosh also indicated i think if you start with what is the job to be done or what are you trying to solve not sell then you'll identify the right innovation like and and the whole value prop that the consumer is uh, is is exposed to is very diverse and very huge 
So somewhere, even as marketeers, we are conscious that the world is so evolving that on certain days, even as uh, a jewelry brand like Tanishq offers you same day delivery. Can you beat that? But it is that uh, it is Dhanteras and I want to be able to put that gold coin in my uh, puja and I haven't been able to step out or I don't want to step out and therefore can you make it convenient for me. So I think it starts from saying what is the consumer problem I'm trying to solve and does my innovation allow me to solve it? Can I solve it on my own or do I need delivery partners, payment gateway partners, uh, mechanisms around which uh, I don't need to solve everything on my own. I need to get a team together to solve it. So I think that's the heart of the, the, the linkage. I mean, it stems from the consumer like all of us said, but um, there is a, a, a whole um, world that needs to come together to solve some problems and we have to orchestrate that. Vishal? No, I'll just say that, uh, you know, understand your brand funnel really well. Where do you want to focus on? Because it will become otherwise very difficult. You know, top of the funnel, mid of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. Each one of them will have a role to play. And where do you want to focus at that point in time? And where are you in the journey? So that's very important. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we spoke about, uh, you know, there are certain keywords which I presume you guys would have picked up. You know, before I add the next question, I want to create this opportunity where if anyone from the audience wants to ask a question, you know, um, please feel free to raise your hand. Um, um, I promise you a 15, 20 minute dedicated slot with one of them. I'll fix that on your calendar. You know, that's the incentive for you guys. <laughs> so if you're up to, uh, don't hesitate to, uh, you know, show your curiosity. Okay, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that as a pass. Uh, so before, um, you know, the last, the last, as we try to probably conclude the conversation or bring this to a logical conclusion, so far we spoke about, you got different perspectives around innovation out there. Having said that, you know, uh, it's, innovation is also such a thing that we are constantly seeking, right? You know, as much as we have to manage it, uh, we are always on the lookout of it. You know, from, from that lens, uh, my last question to the panel members would be that when they're closely looking at the funnel, which are the areas where they actually feel they need a little more innovation? That's a good one. Thank you. No, for us, uh, you know, we, being a luxury brand, it's not about sales, it's about creating desirability for the brand. So, and digital generally and digital marketing comes with this performance metrics always on, on clicks, on pass-throughs, on cost per sale. And I think for us, the challenge is on the top of the funnel uh, in terms of how the desirability can be increased using digital. And there are a lot of tools, there are a lot of science available, but still it lacks measurement uh, like any other uh, medium uh, to some extent on the desirability side. Uh, but when it comes to end of the funnel, there is a lot of uh, data available uh, to analyze. So in, in our view, we are still looking at to, uh, how can this via content, of course there are already solutions available, uh, but uh, what can we play? Because there is also sometimes the team comes up and says we should not be on banner ads, we should not be on some of those areas because as a luxury brand it doesn't suit us and there is nobody going to see that this car uh, at a small banner and then going to click and buy these cars. So uh, that's actually taking away from digital advertising to some extent, but uh, when we look at content we try to look at it completely differently. So uh, for us us as a brand, the innovation we are looking more is in the top of the funnel, surprisingly not at the end of the funnel. <laughs> good, one. Good, good one. I think, um, you know. Polarizing. I have, I have a diametrically um, different thought and I think that's nice to see challenges sit on both sides. I think uh, retention and um, because consumers are getting promiscuous, they have choice. How do brands continue to be immersive? give consumers experiences that uh, build stickiness and loyalty. 
And I know there's a whole lot of discussion. Do consumers need to be loyal to brands or do brands need to be loyal to consumers? That's for another day, I guess. But I think that's where um, the largest challenge uh, lies for us as, um, as a brand. Uh, because we are a very strong brand and we are a national local brand as Tanishq. But as more and more consumers have a wider canvas of uh, jewelry options that they are looking for, how do we stay abreast? How do we keep them engaged? How do we create communities and conversations? Um, we have been doing some bit of work there, but I think there's lots more that we can do. And as value propositions are quickly outsourced and resourced and equally shared across competitors, how do you stay ahead of the game? I think that's one of uh, the things we need to constantly keep working on. So yes, we do need more innovation in awareness, you know, retention, and Pragya, you know, Pragya has more to add. No, because you asked for a wish list, so I don't want to miss out the chance. <laughs> so, you know, uh, of course, to opposite view, and this is a little out of boundary. Uh, so, uh, of course, as marketers, and I can talk about my industry, one is digital, the other one is traditional. And so traditional that it can go into even in-store visibility, right? Now, how can digital play a role outside its immediate boundary of digital? So, if I have spent money on in-store, on television, how does it give me an ROI there? Right? Uh, of course, there has been thoughts around, you know, if you do an outdoor, um, there are tools to measure that, you know, how you're increasing awareness, engagement, footfalls, whatever. But is there a stable solution in the market for that? You know, because we tend to, for a mass brand like us, which is, you know, into categories where we can't ignore the audience which are outside of digital, we need to participate there. The study says that consumers look for solution both online and offline when they look at a fan or even an electric kettle or whatever, but they tend to also go to the shop to buy it. And if they go to the shop to buy it, then I need to place my, you know, brand everywhere, including my in-shop. So how does digital play a role to, for me to see how much of that is working for me. So, that's the wish list. You know, the list can go on, yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, I'll just like to uh, point out that the biggest innovation uh, that digital has brought to us is moving to one-on-one -on -one communication rather from one-to-many communication. Uh, and, and that is where, whether it's uh, in-store, whether it's outdoor, whether it's uh, online, whether it's offline, digital has a role to play. Uh, somewhere, we are putting extra burden on digital because of this whole attribution game. Uh, we, we, we kind of look at uh, digital only from a performance point of view, uh, looking for uh, ROI on every buck spent, which we don't look at uh, probably from offline media. And, and that is where, uh, somewhere we're limiting the beauty of digital. Uh, digital has a lot to offer. Uh, and I, and I'm, no, I'm not uh, uh, confusing it between uh, personalization. I, I think that is another trap and probably for uh, another session. But this one-on-one -on -one communication, that's the beauty. And that is where we need to judicially pick up uh, innovations that within that what we want to pick, whether it's AR, whether it's simple analytics, whether it's uh, more in terms of targeting, whether it's uh, metaverse. So uh, I think uh, digital can help you in, in your in-store as well as your outdoors and everywhere. And, and like, uh, like Sudanshu was uh, saying, uh, there's a lot of smart things that are coming up. And these smart things are talking to each other. Uh, when, you, when you open a, a fridge in a, a store and you pick up a bottle, it, 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 is, it is calculating everything. It is noting down everything, who has uh, uh, picked up what, uh, where was it placed on the shelf. So there's a lot that digital can uh, help you with everything. Cool. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, you know, I'm going to just probably uh, try to conclude this session out here now. Um, what you guys heard about uh, when we started the conversation, I hope you were cautiously optimistic of the expectation from this panel. Yeah? Um, and I hope that as we've come to the conclusion of this thing, you've got your ROI of spending time with us. Yeah? Uh, one message I would like to give you is that you know, all of us in the room, uh, I think that you know, collaboration is very key. So think of innovation, think of people in the team, or think of external partners. Probably, you know, virtually just imagine them as they are your chief R&D partners. You don't have to invest into all of that. You know, each 
platform out there, each partner out there, and each mind out there, you know, is there to come and give you a perspective, you know, on any of these use cases, whether it is building one-to-one -one connections, whether it is aligning, you know, towards the marketing funnel, you know, and, but constantly, you know, remind yourself that innovation or utilization of innovation is not to be done from a FOMO perspective. It's, it's more to be done from a perspective that, okay, fine, I'm solving some problems, I'm not just adopting something just because I need to adopt something. Yeah. So with that, uh, we'll conclude this conversation. Thank you so much to the audience for being patient with us. And I hope that you guys have a good day. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you to my fellow panel members.